move that back a little bit. We'll get going. We're going to be working on a peacock journal where I am and you get to watch. It is made for a friend who requested one. And I thought, well, it'd be kind of fun to share what I'm doing along the way. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll just have fun just watching, spending an hour with me or so of doing this peacock journal. So what I've got going so far is I have, and I went to the Scrapbook Expo and the May May Made It Con down in Texas. And so I had plenty of time to work on this stuff. But these are what I've got going on for the pages on the inside of it. And uh, these are just miscellaneous um, painty papers, white papers, just papers I've had fun with that I've stamped on. Whoop. Had fun with that I've stamped on. I can't have that. There we go. We got a little feedback going on. Anyway, these are just painty papers that I've had um, lots of fun with doing. Um, this one here is a paper that I did with uh, Kool-Aid. Uh, this one here is a shaving cream paper that I did shaving cream marbling on. Jelly prints. Uh, let's see what else do we have in here. I sprayed some doilies. And so I saved uh, the paper because it was kind of shimmery. I don't know if that's going to show up on online or not. But anyway, it's shimmery. Um, an artist friend of mine uh, suggested spraying different things. So I did some dictionary papers. But there's just all kinds of papers in here. And I let her go through the stack and pick out what she liked about it. And this one here was credit card painting, which is really super easy and fun because this one is a monotone one, just one color, maybe a yellow. But anyway, you just put some paint on there and you just take your credit card and go across it until you get the colors that you want, the pattern that you want. And they look really pretty. So she picked out... Uh, several of the different ones that she liked to make her book up with. Not necessarily all peacock colors, but it was ones that she that she liked. This one was grape Kool-Aid. You just do it like you do your uh, tide, your tea paper that your tea and coffee paper that you stick in the oven. There's another one of the credit card swipes some marbling papers mm, i don't remember i think this was this was playing with some liquid watercolor that had some glitter in it i thought that was kind of pretty obviously she did too and then there's that one she also likes mermaids so i kind of see the trend in the blues and the greens that she picked out for her book but you can't have it all blues and greens. That one's really pretty. And that was done with stencils. That's kind of cool. So there's a big variety when you go through this journal. Of different. Now that was the shaving cream paper. There's a big variety of different colors and patterns. Plenty to work with and do things with. I actually thought that I had, ooh, that one's really rich in color. I actually thought I had started one that had some stenciling done on it already, but I don't, I don't see it. I wondered if I grabbed the wrong. Hmm. Yep, that must be the right one. I just thought I'd done some stamping in it already, but evidently I didn't. 
Well, that gives us fun things to do with it now. Um, so there's lots of things that, that you can do in a journal to make it different and unique. You can do stenciling, you can do texture paste, you can do some painting in it. So we're not going to worry about that only one side of this is finished and the other side isn't because, let me set those aside, <coughs> pardon me. We're going to, on the sides that aren't finished, we've got plenty of different items to decorate with. We've got some doilies. We got some beautiful napkins that we can collage. We got some uh, peacock feathers. There's some peacock beads. And in a happy mail, somebody had sent me some little card fronts that had embossed peacocks on. So that'll be fun that we can add to it. We can use these for little tuck spots and whatever. Can you see that? Let me get, there we go. Get the light off of it. Isn't that pretty? Um, in a swap, somebody had sent me some peacock feathers that would be really pretty in there. And some peacock die cuts, which I did get some dies from AliExpress that I'll be putting some die cuts of my own in there. But here is some more that we can decorate some of those blank pages with. Um, this is a stamped image that has been embossed. So that'd be kind of cool for a tag or a bookmark. And here's uh, some tissue paper. I like that crinkly sound. So I don't know where we're going to put it. We're going to put it in there somewhere. And you always got to have some glitter of some sort. Here's another peacock napkin that we're going to put in there. Okay. Let's see what else do we have for it. I actually have just a whole little box. And this is going to be more than one video because we're not going to get done today. But I'm, I've got some um, cotton twill type stuff, fabric. And some vinyl that's kind of a, the same color thing that she seems to be liking that I'm going to make. I seen online and it wasn't on a Facebook or YouTube. It was just something that somebody was selling a store where they cut the scalloped edges out and they did a flower tassel. And then we could do a French tassel and I got um, bead caps to put on the end of the tassels. Um, these also came from AliExpress. And this is a junk journal. So what we're going to have in it is some recycled junk that you would normally throw away. I thought I would paint the bag, the inside of the bag. I don't know if you can see, it is actually a waxed cellophane lined bag. So you just wipe it out. Um, I used a Clorox. Yeah, I used a Clorox wipe, and so that took care of cleaning the outside because obviously you can't get the paper wet um, to make it germ-free and sanitary. But then I'm just going to paint the outside, uh, maybe a stamp or two on it with the colors that she likes. The same with this bag. I thought that was just the coolest bag ever. Boom, chicka pop. And then I like this sweet and salty which kind of describes the person that this journal's going to. She's sweet and salty. And she'll see some humor in it. Uh, we got a... Somehow I'm going to incorporate this into the journal cover. It's a scarf. I'll probably have to align it with something that has peacocks on it. So that's, that's kind of cool. We've got uh, some peacock uh, embroidery. Oh, just like patches. They're so you're supposed to sew them on. 
We've got sequins galore. We've got some elastic ribbon that I'm going to use somehow in the um, journal on the outside for a closure. We've got some peacock washi because you got to have some washi in it. And there's some more peacock washi. And I found some metallic blue ribbon or string, I mean. And then when I was at the expo, I also found, oh, there's a really pretty card. That would make a really pretty tuck spot. So I also found some of these um, jewels that is all the peacock colors. You see that? Get it to hold. Oh, there we go. And there's blues and greens and turquoises. It'll be really pretty. Um, and some glitter ribbon. And of course, you got to have some washi that's really pretty in the peacock colors. And I haven't done it yet, but this is going to go on the front, not this particular item. But what this is, is a mold, silicone mold for resin. And I'm going to color the resin and paint it in and fill it in. And it'll be a hard acrylic piece on the front of her journal that is a peacock. I thought that would be very, very pretty. And here's a thought, because I have lots of these. I don't know if that's going to show up online or not. If it shows up on camera, but what it is, it is tape for um, to do your fingernails with. And I ordered them from AliExpress. It was super cheap. I got like 20 rolls of it for 50 cents or something like that. But I'm going to go through them and I'm going to pick out all of the blues, teals, and greens, metallics, and glitters, and somehow put that on her journal, in your journal, or whatever. And um, also got this from AliExpress. It is a peacock. So I'll do some dyes with the peacock on there. Thank you, Mary. And let's see, what else do we have in here? No journal would be complete. And I know everybody tried, heard, or went to the Hobby Lobby um, restocking sale that they did back in like February or March. Anyway, what did I pay for these? I paid $3.25 for a whole jar of great big ones. And I'm going to decorate her little paper clips probably with peacocks or peacock feathers or something like that. So she'll have some markers to go in the top of her journal. Now, another thing I found and the only place I could find these was AliExpress. And they'll be super, super cute um, with her journal. Is I actually found flat back peacock little beads. Or they're not beads. They're like little gems. Can you see that? Is that focusing? Whoops, let me get over here where it's at. How cool is that? So instead of just using regular little flat back uh, rhinestones, gems, or bobbles, um, I actually found peacock, which I didn't think I was going to do. How cool is those? Those are so beautiful. I got all different colors, all different sizes, and you know there is white peacocks, and I was really surprised to actually find white ones. You see how that this glitters? I don't think it's showing up quite as glittery as it is in person because they are just magnificent with glitter. But anyway, got all different sizes. Um, that's what I'll be using for some of her embellishments is these. And they're just they're just uh flat backs, little fabric tack or tacky glue or something rather to hold them on. They had them in different colors. Whoops, get the glare off that. 
They had them in different colors, different sizes, shapes. They even had some that kind of hinted that it was a peacock. Or I was looking at so many peacocks in the middle of the night, couldn't sleep, that I thought, yep, that's a peacock. That's not really a peacock, but it's the same shape as the others, the same color family. And so I thought that would be kind of cool. And they had them cleared down to little bitty ones. And there is these. And they just got so many colors, no matter which way you turn it, you're looking at something different from the angle that it's showing on film as I'm looking at the camera looks green. But when I look at it in my hand, the angle I'm looking at, it looks like a royal blue. So they, they're iridescent. They just, depending on which direction you're looking at is what color it's gonna be. So that gives it a lot of dimension, a lot of different looks to your page that you're doing. So let me clean up my mess. And I think what we'll start with is we'll do some uh, we'll do some painting on some of the pages that aren't done yet. Yes, we do, Mary. <laughs> and I'm not sure what I would do with these sequins, but I just thought they were so cool to be in that color. And I think at the Scrapbook Expo, I think I paid a dollar a pack for them. I'm not sure. So it wasn't that much. I'll use them for shaker cards if I don't use it for this, but I think I can incorporate it somewhere in it. Maybe we'll go ahead and start on the tassels. That way they can be drying. So let me grab some scissors. Let's see. Don't you love when you put things away and you don't know what you did with them? Where's my scissors? There they are. Let's find a score of scissors that is kind of a scallopy. I really want big scallops, is what it looked like on the paper. And I suppose I could do, oh, here's, no, that's not scallops. Does anybody know why they make so many scissors? I just don't get it. Of course, we got to buy them when they make them, right? That one's that one's a small one, but I really want I want something with bigger scallops than this. So let me continue to look here, and we'll make some homemade tassels. Oh, that one's a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can find another one. And that one's a smaller one. We might be able to, we've got enough fabric we could actually do two tassels and maybe put a small one on one of those gigantic paper clips. Those are so funny. And how many people went to Hobby Lobby looking at the stuff that was on clearance and thought, I never knew they sold that. I never saw that before. Okay, so I think I'm going to try these three scissors and see what I can come up with on those. Let me put this back. All right. Now, I don't know what they used on. I mean, it's made from the factory. I'm assuming it's liquid glue or hot glue, but I think I'm going to try it with fabric tack. A lady around the lake actually gave these away. They're made from, um, or what it's left over from is making uh reposting boat seats i think is what it was 
how accurate do you think I would be? Shouldn't try that. So let's just, uh, I wonder if I got one that's a little bit wider. Or let me grab a pencil up here. Just eyeball about right there. That's a pretty wide one. And I'm not going to worry about this line. Oops, my ink pen's leaking. Good grief. Because the line will be inside the bead cap and we won't see it anyway, so we're not going to worry about that. And I don't really know how long it needs to be, but I can always cut off the excess so we don't have to worry about it. Oh, look at that. How silly is that? <laughs> I got ink on me. I didn't even know pens could do that nowadays. But they fixed all of that. I don't want to get it on the front, so let me wipe it off real quick. Get out the trusty baby wipe. Make a mess. Make a mess. All right. See, I even got it on my scissors. Good grief. Ridiculous. All right, so let me cut this out. And then we'll do the scalloped edge on the other side, opposite of where we made our ink mess. So it's not being seen. Throw that off to the side. And I wonder how these scissors will actually cut. Let's see, which one was the biggest? That one is. It may not cut this. We'll have to see. Yeah, it's not going to cut that. That's okay. We'll just sit here. And we'll just go and make our little, own little scallops. And that'll be fine because really no flower is perfect. And I really didn't see one of those that had a big enough scallop on it anyway. And I wanted kind of a bigger scallop. So this, this works out. When in doubt, make it work. And if this doesn't work, I got plenty more of this fabric vinyl stuff. And then I think we'll make a tassel, regular tassel, out of the green. Or turquoise colored one. We'll make a regular tassel out of it. See you later, Mary. Robin, are you here? It doesn't tell me who's watching. I suppose I could reach over and poke it, but I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm playing. Okay. And then we'll just straighten that edge up a little bit. Throw away our other stuff. Get rid of these. 
And so basically what you're gonna do is you're taking it, we'll just see what it's gonna look like and see if our scallops are right. What do you think? Think we need to make them a little bit bigger? A little deeper, I think, because you're not really going to see the scallop that I saw. Yeah, needs to be a little bit deeper scallops. All right, we're on a mission. We're going to get this figured out. So we're going to really scallop it. Nice and deep. into bigger petals. It just looks so beautiful. And I thought there is no way I, I can do this. I am not paying what they were asking for it. I can go home and I can figure this out, save my money for other stuff. All right, let's see if those are deep enough now. And then I'm thinking, ah, it's wanting to curl on the same thing. I'm thinking you need to cut them up a little higher. What do y'all think? I'm thinking you just need to actually make a petal, but that would work. Then our petals would be separated. We just need to leave a little strip at the top to actually go into the bead cap. That's a big old petal there. Let's trim that one down. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot better. And then as we go along, your petals are going to stick out a little bit because this is just the beginning of it. And by the time it's done, you're going to have petals. All right, so now that we know what we're doing, we're cooking with bacon now. We're just going to keep going. And continue to make our little petals. I knew we could figure this out. And then when you put some hot glue in there, that is also going to make them stand out a little bit from each other. Am I making the whole table rock when I do that? <laughs> Maybe I should lift my arms up. And then I'm thinking as we get closer to the edge, here's my thought, as we get closer to the end, they need to keep getting shorter and more graduated so your flower is bigger at the inside and smaller on the outside. Does that make sense? So we'll start making our petals a little bit smaller up here. That way all of our petals will show. That one needs to be trimmed out just a little bit more. Hmm. Oops, that one needs to be a little bit shorter.
Okay. Now let's see what we got going on here. Clean up my mess. So you can concentrate on what I'm doing instead of my big old mess. I have to get that really tight because let me pull out a bead cap. Figure out how to open up without tearing up the package. Oh well. Okay, so there's a couple bead caps. Get that out of the way. It's just got to be small enough that it will actually go inside the bead cap. So we need to make sure that this doesn't get any bigger than our bead cap. Alrighty. So we're just going to keep as tight as we can to begin with. And we're just going to keep going and roll it and roll it. And then when we get to the other end, I think what I'll do is I'll put fabric tack on it because that is some strong stuff. Let me stop every once in a while, make sure that we aren't getting any bigger than what will fit into our bead cap. There's a little flower starting to come out. I'm thinking we're not going to get clear down to the end because we're going to run out of room to fit it into our bead cap. Yep. Okay. So let me stop this one here until I can find the bigger bead cap and we'll roll the rest of it for this one. For this size bead cap. Whoops. It got away from me. Just keep keep it nice and tight. And twist it. Twist it. Keep rolling. And it doesn't look like much when you're starting out, but it actually, when you get it all done and your petals are going up the sides, then it looks a little bit better. And you kind of get the gist of what it's going to be. I can't even remember who was selling them. You know what I think AliExpress was? Yeah, because I was on there last night. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> I didn't buy anything. I was just looking, just scouting it out, seeing what they had. All right. This one might be too big. Also, but we're going to play with it and see what we can't get going. All right. And like I said, after we put some glue on it, we can fluff it up. Yeah, that's not going to fit either. All right, so that one's going to wait till I find the bigger bead caps because I didn't find them before I come on. All right, but let's go ahead and while we've got this out, let's go ahead and do a fringe. Now I find out that when I do these fringes, I want to take off. I know you just saw me do that. I took out a thread and I pulled it out. That will keep it from unraveling at the end. So do I want to mess with that. I don't think I want to mess with that pin again. Let me grab a different one. Oh, 
on this one, again, I'm just going to pull out till it looks like I'm, I'm just going to eyeball it, pull out to about there. I don't think that's marking. Yeah, it is. Good enough for me to see. And you can do these with paper also. You can do them with leather, blue jeans, um, really wide ribbon. Would be cool to do that with. All right, so we're just going to start. And actually, I think I have a fringing scissors. I do. Lucky there. I don't know if it'll cut on this because it's meant for paper. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Just a little tough. Yeah, I think it was much easier to do it this way. And we're just going to cut it almost to the top. And then we'll roll it up and it'll be a nice fringy tassel to put on the outside of her book, maybe on the bookmark. Maybe just use it with some charms would be kind of cool. But if you take out that bottom one or two threads, then it keeps it from wanting to um, unravel. Remember, you could always use those fuzzy pom-poms. They have little ones. That would be cute on there. Hanging with a few charms. And I don't want this real um, long just for the simple fact that I want it to be fluffy. I don't want it to be too tight in the bead cap or it's not going to, it's not going to move. And we want it to be able to move. We don't want a real long one because it's just an embellishment. All right, let's, let's see what this looks like. Get that rolling up there. And this will be beautiful in her peacock journal. It'll be the right colors. Oh, yeah, I think I fringed just enough. See, look at that. Let me make sure that it's still going to fit into our bead cap. So that's about, that's about it. So actually, I fringed way too much. Some for another project. Or I might use it for the top of a tag would be awful pretty. So I just want to make sure that I got that squeeze. It's nice and tight. Pull off a couple of strings off the top. All righty. Now we'll get down to actually gluing it in. Make sure that it still fits. Oh, yeah, that's going to be really pretty. Can't wait till it's done. Now, I think 
rather than have a mess, I think what I want to do, and I'm just using um, Fabric Tech, and I get this at Walmart. You can get it at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, and whatever, and use a coupon on it. Uh, I think it's like $9 at Walmart. It's kind of pricey. But if you want some fabric to really, really hold, Fabric Tech is what you need. And I'm just going to put enough in there to squeeze inside all of my different layers. Uh oh. But not enough to where it's actually going to come squeezing out over the edges. Well, good grief. There it goes. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. And I find the best way to do these is to turn them the same way that you was winding it together and then give it a good snug push. And what that's doing is actually going to get up into the different layers of our tassel. There's one that's just a little bit longer than the others. I needed a haircut, haircut and a trim. And so there's our tassel. How pretty is that? And like I said, you could do these with any color that you wanted and have your own homemade tassel. And it's just the right colors. You can you know, obviously do whatever colors that you wanted. So there's our tassel done. And when I get the bigger tassels, I have three sizes, but I couldn't find the large ones. When I get the bigger tassels, I'll do the flower ones and get those completed. All right, so now I think I want to do some painting on the back of these papers. I think I want to pull out some stencils, have some fun. I want to get them painted. That way I can go ahead and do um, some texturing on the back and some stamping. And I can't really do that until I get... All of my other stuff done. So let's see what do we got in here and I'm not really picky on what I'm going to use in a journal because I think it's just a little bit of this and a little bit of that and I obviously don't uh, don't clean my stencils. <laughs> And I got a bunch of stencils that I'm wanting to break in. So guess what? You get to help me break them in. We get to break them in together. How exciting is that? We don't want a Christmas one. We just want something like those. And I just want some abstract. Oh, look at there. Forgot I had that one. It's a peacock. Definitely got to use that one. There's some flowers. There's some flowers. Oh, there's a tree. All right, so we've got some stencils. So let's bust them out and let's get it going. We can use the ones that's already open first. And let's see. Now these are going to obviously be folded in half, and this is the size of her journal. But we don't care. We're just gonna we're just gonna lay them in here, and we are gonna paint.
Let's see. And the paint I'm going to use is all different kinds. And I'll try to remember to tell you what I'm using it as I'm using it. That way you can see how different kinds of paint work. This was one of the um, finds at Hobby Lobby. And it's just the fine touch acrylic. They come in all different colors. I've got on hand. Um, is this cerulean? No. Can't even see what color that is. I don't have my glasses on. But anyway, there's a blue, and then this one is a teal. And so we're just going to do some painting and some stenciling to make her papers pretty. And remember, at this point, I don't even know what's going to be on the other side. So we'll get a good healthy glob of that out. And let's put a glob of the blue. And this one is a dilutions paint. And I'm just going to scoop some of that out. This one is fresh lime. Let me grab a stick. These little coffee stores, aren't they the best? All right, that's enough to get us started. Right? Let's see what else we got over here that we can add. Here's a Deco Arts uh, metallic. What color is this? Pewter. Deco Arts Pewter. And I want to add just a little bit of that on my little palette here, just because I want some of that. Let me grab another stick. I want some of that shine. You know what? Let me stir this. Let me shake it. Let me shake it up. And that's just a little bit of metallic because I like metallic sometimes and it might help darken that green up just a little bit. All right. And let the painting begin. Let the painting begin. And I don't have no preference on brushes when it comes to stenciling because I just do whatever I want to do. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And it actually looks like we might need to add, ah, oh, there it is, a little bit of water, not to that one. that and that the fine touch paints are semi um, they're, they're very heavy bodied paints so we're just going to take a little bit of that blue And I don't want to completely cover up this extra. 
but I do want to this kind of run off the page and in a random pattern. And I am just going to, now when you're doing this, it's kind of a pounce. You're not doing, you're not swiping it because you will run right underneath the stencil. That's why I said it was kind of thick, which makes this ideal paint to do this with. Um, it does hold its texture a little bit. It's not going to like level off. So you get a little bit of texture with this fine touch paint. Uh, let me grab just a little bit of that and add that in just a shade. If I can grab just a little bit of that green. Ooh, look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And then a little bit more of this blue because it's coming down here. And we're not going to go clear to the edge of our stencil because we don't want that harsh line in there. And we're going to add some blue. And there'll also be tuck spots in here. There'll be flips. So you may not see all of the stuff that we're doing anyway. So I try to keep that in mind when I'm going to paint on a page it is not to be too precise because it may not be there when I get done with the actual journal. So how did that look? Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I think I need, I think I need some green right through there. So I'm going to go back through and hold that down so it doesn't get away from me. And I'm going to add some green right there. Now check this out. On this side, see all the paint that's on the outside of that? We're just going to flip it. Look at that. We're just going to flip it over because we don't want to waste the paint. And we're going to go along with a brayer and we're going to rub it. Get all the extra off of my brayer while I'm at it. Now check this out. Voila! <laughs> I always think that's fun. Voila! <laughs> so there we go. Now it looks a lot better than what it did before. Still looks distressed, still looks, you know, okay. But now we've added some texture to it, some paint to it. I love this rainbow. I think the rainbow needs something. Rainbow needs something. I think the rainbow needs some. Hmm. I think the rainbow needs some. I think it needs some rain. That's what it needs. It needs some rain. So let me grab my splatter brush. And what color do I want to use for rain? White's really not going to show up. So let's see. Let me move that tassel before I get something on it. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see.
All right. I have some art and trilogy here. And I have some broken china distress paint. We'll try this one first. And I don't want to spray my actual. These are little silicone cups. Um, I attended a sneak and peek where they demoed some stuff. And I believe these were for dentistry cups or for the cosmetologist to work on your nails. These are super. If you ever get a chance to get a hold of some silicone cups, these are super just because no matter what you put in them, it comes right out. So that really works very well for the kind of work that we do in our journals because you don't have to worry about it staining. So I have squirted, sprayed some in there. And I believe this brush here was um, Tim Holtz, maybe. I believe. Don't quote me on it. But anyway, it's just got like wire tips. And so you can dunk it in there. And get it to come out. And you're just getting the tips wet. And tap on your brush. This brush, I also use it for scratching my paper. To distress my paper. Okay. Now, let me rinse it out real quick. And wipe it off. Put it back. Let's see what else. All right, let's set that one aside to dry before I do anything else to it. Ooh, we got a blank one. We have a blank one to work with. I think I am going to do a credit card swipe on this. I can add a little bit of this in. Just like the way those colors mix. How cool is that? And these are just old gift cards that somebody has given me or that I just pick up at the store. They're used or anyway. Check how fast and cool that is. And you see where I originally swiped at where the ink really stuck in the paper? And then you have this where the colors all kind of intermixed. And this paper will be ready for stenciling when it dries. How cool is that? Voila. All right, so let me set that off to the side. And I think we got enough paint here. We could actually do a couple more white backgrounds. Let me get the paint off the mat so I don't paint the front of my paper. Just slap that on here, grab my little wet wipe, and wipe this off. What's fun about mixed media um, is that you can do it in anything, in cards, journals, whatever. It's, anything goes. Anything goes. Absolutely. Anything goes. 
So I'm going to make my initial little spots that'll soak into the paper first and give us that really cool highlight. Whoops, can't be that rough on it, huh? Well, I think that sticks about head. Just keeps breaking. Alrighty, so now we're ready to have some fun. Maybe let's add some of this in. See what it looks like. See how it mixes. See if it mixes. Wow, that changed it. Kind of gave it a, a really watery, but made it kind of greenish. Still pretty. Still pretty. Okay, wipe off all the extra. And set that one off to dry. See, there's that one. Let me just go in and wipe some of this green off on it. Just because. Because I don't like wasting it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Okay. And this one just needs something going on on the in middle there. So I'm just going to flip it around and get these ready and so the next time that we do this video these will all be done hopefully and we'll start with uh, doing the stenciling the stamping actually we'll have to do stamping and stenciling and then we can do some textures some really fun textures let's throw some of this blue in here But hopefully this gives you a lot of different ideas on what you can do to make your own painty papers. You don't have to have a jelly plate to do these on. You can do these with yourself. And actually, if you don't have it, your paint will dry out quicker. But if you don't have a jelly plate, you can use a piece of glass. Just your paint's going to dry out a little quicker, so you want to work faster. Um, let's see. What goes with that? Let's put some. And I'll, when I go to make the signatures in this book, I will make sure that these pages are all at different areas of the book. So there's nothing that's redundant or repeats quite a bit. Because we all like a little variety in our books. We don't want to see the same thing, or at least I don't. I don't want to see the same thing over and over. I do want to see one main color or theme, but I want to see other things. I want it to be cohesive in some way, but I also want something that is interesting to my eye that draws my attention to different things, not all the same things. So even though purple is not a peacock color, it's still kind of cool. 
you got to have that different or I do I got to have different brightness all right so we're going to go ahead and empty our palette out and finish that and these can be drying um, like I said when next time we come in and work on this I will have all these pages painted and I will have it all ready so we can do some fun stamping and some other things to the journal but I just wanted you to see what the what the bare bones of the book was oh, camouflaged my own credit card here Ooh, I like that. That's pretty. Ooh, I like that. But you can even use, and I do have them, I use them, I love them, the cheap 50 cent bottles of paint at Walmart that they sell in their craft section. You don't need something from Hobby Lobby to do this. I love going and grabbing, you know, 50 cent bottles and they have so many different colors. They have metallics. So they're really fun to work with. I like how that one turned out. There's a lot of different colors, a lot of things that draws your eyes to different colors. All right, so let's find us another one. Need another baby bag. Metallics are very fun to use in these journals or on your painting papers because they have, offer, you know, some glitter to it. Glitter paint, however, generally doesn't show up very well. Um, the glitter kind of overtakes the color. It's more translucent, or at least I find that it is. You want something more opaque that isn't going to be seen through. Now you could paint these papers or add your um, your own glitter, microfine glitter or regular glitter even to this acrylic paint. That way you can control what the end result's gonna be. Let me swipe up what's left. And we'll finish this off camera. And this will be part one of the journal. And we'll go on to part two, where we work on decorating the pages and embellishing it. There we go. This is also made with silicone. Let me give you another. This is made from silicone into just a to-go container lid. And what's nice about this, my friend made these for me. And what's nice about these is, and I've used them a lot. And thank you. Thank you for making them for me. But what's nice about these is you can take these out and just wash them. It's silicone, just like the little silicone cup. Nothing sticks to it. So it's always going to come clean. I've never had one stain. I can just throw it in a, in a new lid. And if this lid gets cracked or whatever, I can just use a different lid. Or not a, not a lid at all. She actually made them with a little bit of a lip, which is super nice. All righty. Rid of that. I think this is probably our last one. And what's really cool is you don't see what color is going to pop out when you're doing the credit card swipes until you pull your credit card through. Because it looked like a glob, but then here we've got some yellows and some blues and some greens, and they all show up independently instead of that muddy mix of colors, which is really cool. I like that. Some paints. Um, won't give you that kind of a texture. Actually, I think I have enough to do one more paper. And then we'll call it good for now. Let all you good people get out of here.
I'm sure you're tired of watching me paint. How cool is that? Love it. Shoot, I think I got enough on here to do one more. Let's do some little pieces. And I think that is all I'm going to get out of it. There we go. We got and a back. Like this one has a front and a back. You can't see how vibrant that is. That is very dark, but yet vibrant. It's hard to describe. And there's some, uh, just a shimmer to it because this was, what was this? It was the Dollar Rowney um, liquid ink and some of it had glitter in it. So that was really cool. So I'm going to end the video for now and I'm going to clean up my mess and um, I'll go back and I'll relabel this one as part one. That way people can watch the journey of the Peacock Journal being made before it goes on to its new owner. But the next time we come back, we'll have all of the paper's done and all we got to do is decorate which is the fun part right that's the fun part all righty i think that's all for now folks why is it doing that There we go. Oh, like, give me thumbs up, like, subscribe. Hey, make sure that you check out my um, giveaway for 50 subscribers. I'm so excited. Like and subscribe and we'll talk to you later.